not gonna bend my eyes. But, uh, what's up? What's up, guys? What's good? What's what's good? How do we do this? Uh, we're Jungle Beats, I think. We're jungle Beats in this bitch. No, no, we are. There's no thinking involved. There's just saying whatever comes to your mind. Who are you? I'm Thade Gray. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I changed my name, but that's not what we're, that's not what we're here to talk about today about, but I'm Thade now, so. And, I, and I'm Alexander Emmanuel Sandalis. I now have three names, uh, but we are Jungle Beats, and we are here. We are back. Mm -hmm. from we're in different states right now we should uh clarify that's why we're on video yeah yeah i moved to uh sydney new south wales what's up you okay melbourne's better but you okay <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we have decided that we're going to i think this j cole album really it's so good and it kind of sparked so much inside of me of like mm. man this album is a lot like this is it's like it's excited me to kind of get back to this and you know the off season for j cole it's like oh now we're coming out of our own off season for jungle beats mm. into this in a bit of a resurgence of doing music and reviewing albums in a more flexible relaxed way where we don't have to review every single thing that comes out but yeah because we're passionate. We've always been passionate about this. It's just, you know, we're at a time in our lives where, you know, it just feels right again. Yeah. And we're not, you know, thinking too heavily about how we're going to go about it. It's yeah. the fact that we're just doing it. Exactly. Well said. And so it's not mm -hmm. about coming perfect to like, oh, we got to review the album a day after it comes out. Which you could uh, relate back to J. Cole. Because the big thing about this album was he said, I wasn't thinking too heavily about, I've used this lyric before, or I've done this flow before. It's just about getting it down just getting it out don't don't focus too heavily on it just get it finished so was that in the relate that. was that in the documentary you're referring to yeah i think i want to talk about the documentary before we get into the album yeah, as let's well do that. because that because that uh that is what leads up to how the album was made and a lot about what the album is about because you could critique the this lot. meeting is being recorded oh yeah were you not recording no before? i was i have a backup recording <laughs> it's all fuego there's a real creepy zoom thing this meeting yeah, is yeah, being yeah. recorded but, uh, but you could, because people could say arguments with J. Cole's previous albums being that the reason you can connect with it a lot is because he didn't talk about his life a lot. He tried to talk about other people's lives or like KOD, you could say, was more about, you know, people's addictions. And I guess you could say, what I'm trying to get at is that this album is purely about his story and himself, which is why you can relate to it more, why you can really feel that hunger more, because, you know, J. Cole's admitted that he isn't very prominent with the outside world so for him to be talking about his world of course it's going to be better because he knows it absolutely absolutely that's really interesting because i hear his storytelling on this album to be more enticing i feel like i'm really drawn mm. in like on tracks like uh it was either punch in the clock or applying pressure where mm. He's telling a story of how he first got exposed to gun violence. Do you remember that one? I think that was... Maybe it's later. Let go of my, I, I, let go of my hand. I know the one you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I can't remember the exact song. And I'm... I think it is let go of my hand. Yeah, sorry. Okay, let's see. Uh, his life and career detailing some of the doubts he has had over the years and the fears he has had as a father of two sons yeah, growing up in a world hand. full of violence and racism. The song's title is derived from a title time where Cole's firstborn asked him to let go of his hand so that he could walk on his own. Mm. Powerful track. And so it's songs like that that I'm drawn to from a storytelling perspective. Mm. And uh, I also wanted to shout out to the fact that uh, a big part of what this album is related back to, say, the warm-up, the come-up, which is all about just constantly pushing himself, making sure that every every moment that he's doing something, he's pushing his craft to get to where he wants to get to because of his friends. Like his friends got him into a corner and were like, bro, like we can tell that like you're, you're in your own head. Like you're not, you're not focused on everything hundred percent. Like if you want to achieve this shit, you got to do this shit. I think it's a really strong testament to showing that the people that you surround yourself around will shape the person that you're going to be. And is that from the documentary as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's from the documentary. 
I want to actually bring up another thing that you we've talked about on the phone is uh, how he had to realize uh, like being critical to himself, but also working, right? The work ethic to do every day. Do you remember that? Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and, and kind of explain what we were talking about? I mean, well, well it's how the, deep did we go? The, it was, we were talking about how Cole was writing and he had to realize that he had to just go every day regardless mm. of his like idea of perfection. Like he was mm. like self-analyzing and, and, and attaching himself too heavily to like, uh, ah. mm. go ahead. I was saying, I just remember I remember a conversation now and a lot of what he this energy and this this way that he this mentality that he had kind of stemmed from about him thinking like oh shit is this is this how I want to go out is this everything that I've done are you are you comfortable knowing that this is it hell no I got way more to do I'm better than this like that's that's where the drive stems from that's it and it's because this this is his sixth album sixth studio mm -hmm. album but it's not supposed to be his last, is it? No, the off season, which was meant to come after KOD, but that's obviously why this mixtape album has come to fruition because of the new, you know, mentality of it. I was like, oh shit, I, I haven't worked with a bunch of producers. I haven't worked with a bunch of different artists. Like, what the fuck am I doing? This isn't my legacy. And, and it shows, man. Like hearing, hearing like fucking Timberland beats, T minus, Jake One, Boy Wonder, for example. Just hearing those different productions mixed in with his own or or you know it's it's it's, it's there's a reason why this album's popping because you know it's different you know i love jake Cole's production but he's, he's got a style and that style can only go so far in my opinion like people were getting bored of it you think he needed the help of other artists to elevate his game and creativity yeah i think so i think hearing other other people's creativity fuels different flows and different ways of rapping for him because it's a different feeling when you have when you're just making music to your own beats like like jake Cole's a dope producer don't get me wrong but i feel like it got to a level where you know he wasn't really doing too much new with this shit and so he couldn't really propel any new new sort of like lyricism or flows from himself because he wasn't challenging himself but hearing different uh you know different people produce for him it brings different sides of him out that's how i feel yeah, and I think because he's he's so well established now in the culture as an artist and musician, it's mm. like I think he talks about like this is where in the albums like this is where your artists fall off like this is where like the crossroad moments. I don't know if you remember. It's like, what do you do now? Like, what's next? Like your sixth album. It's like you can go one way or another. Mm. And I think this album for Cole takes him to that next level. I think so. I think it solidifies a really strong hold in his position as one of the most creative, dominant, quality artists of the, I don't know, the last 50 years. Yeah, and I don't know if you've been seeing it, but there's also this this thing we go around of like, who was the king of the 2010s? It's like the statue with Kendrick, Drake, and J. Cole. Yeah. And I would have put Nikki in that fourth one. Like, I'm not a huge Nikki fan, but there's no there's no denying that either her or Future probably had that fourth spot for the 2010s in terms of uh, credibility, sales, and all that sort of ish. Well, she's done but, now, uh, apparently. <laughs> Nikki's never done. Trust. All right. We'll Trust, see, man. We'll we'll she released more. All right. But uh, but yeah, I, I would have honestly thought that if J Cole's next album. Wasn't because I fucked with KOD. I fucked with Four Your Eyes Only. I mean, of course, no one wants to hear about a man talking about folding clothes and shit. But you know, I didn't. I didn't mind that shit. You remember that? I remember that. But uh, I can agree that those albums didn't have the same level of professionalism and ambition, desire that his previous projects had. So if he didn't release an album with that again, then he would have definitely fallen below the Kendrick and Drake's, right. in my opinion. So the fact that he's brought that back is just repositioned him with the rest in the game. And I think that he realized that he, he realized that if he didn't bring it back to that level of hunger, then, you know, he wouldn't be remembered as, as great as he thought he was, or as great as he knew that he could be. Uh, well said, well said. And that, that makes him one of those top 10 contenders, at least I mean, it's very subjective. We get it, but yeah, it's always, uh, but 
when I first heard this album, like, there's not a single track on here that I don't really like. Yeah, I'm the same. Like, there's not a single, you know how we listen to so many albums and we're like, filler, get rid of it, too long, it's bloated. Mm. I don't feel that with this album. Yeah, I'm, I feel the same. And if I had to pick a weakest track, I would say 100 mil. But I still enjoy the track. It's a celebration. It's an anthem. 100 mil? I get it. Really? Oh, bro, like, I, I, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's a weak track. But if I had to pick a weakest track, it would be that no, one. No, that's interesting to me because that, to me, is one of, like, the... Not, like, lyrically strongest, right? But, like, one of the catchiest, one of the, like, most, uh, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Energetic. That's why I put it. That's why I put it as the lowest though, because it's probably the less okay. lyrically lyrically themed song by him. And also the fact that I feel like it creatively on a flow level and also, I don't know. I just, you know, it's still a great track, but like if I had to pick like the lesser, but that's what, that's what we're getting to is that it's a really good album because you can't really, you know, fault it too heavily. Well, what, what are your, fa your favorites? Because I think the first half of the oh, yeah. album is the strongest to me. Um, depends. Are you playing it from back to front or front to back? I tried that one time, but it's too <laughs> annoying to, you want to tell people like what that is? Like why to do that? Um, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm just, uh, because Alexander, uh, Alexander, oh, sorry. they gray. I'm, I got to flip it. Uh, I gotta flip. cause on your zoom, it says Alexander FYI. Um, hmm. they told me that. If you listen to the album backwards, it can tell an even interesting, more co a different cohesive type of story. But it was a particular detail that you pointed out to me of what the what? Tell me. Um, I just remember reading a thing on Reddit and it was um, about 95 South and Hunger on Hillside. The, the, the direction that South is, is facing with the it's like you, you're meant to start on Hunger on Hillside to go to 95 South because of the way the direction the album is going. And if you listen to it. Some of the tracks fall into the next track better, but then also it doesn't on some other tracks. So the the, the album I feel has definitely been created to be listened to front to back or back to front. Oh. But there's but there's no necessarily better way. I personally feel uh, back to front. It's a better album. Can I hit you with something I just read? Yeah. yeah. The album's theme concerns Cole's path between his two homes, uh, hmm. Fayetteville, uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. I'm sorry for pronouncing that wrong. And Queens, New York, it begins with 95 South, which refers to driving southbound on the I-95, yeah. which is an interstate connecting the two. The narrative ends with this song referring to the Hillside Avenue, a street in Queens. Cole would have to travel north to get there from North Carolina, north-south. Interesting. Yes, sir. Oh. Um, Obi, you asked for favorite tracks before. I um, did. I can I can tell you my my favorite track followed by the next few. My favorite track, which actually was on the uh, the EP before, is the climb back. I think the climb back has the best production on this album, and it's actually just J Cole. J Cole only produces two tracks in this album, purely him, and I think it's just the climb back and uh, I think it's either close or interlude from memory. But I think lyrically, uh, especially on the hook, it's his best track, along with Let Go of My Hand. But yeah, and then my next two, my, my next few favorite tracks would probably be Amari, uh, yeah. Pride is the Devil, Let Go of My Hand, and My Life. I think they're probably the next best tracks, in my opinion. When you, like, what is it about those tracks? Is it, yeah, you tell me, like, what stands out about them? Mm. Um, well, besides the climb back, My Life stands out because it gives you that same sort of feeling that uh, a lot had with 21 Savage and Murray with the with the bridge as well. I feel yeah, like that's really it's just nice. overall production and lyrically, it's just a really beautiful track. And Amari before it, I just feels like it's just that, you know, it's that subtle banger. It's got that little braggadociousness to it. But it's like, I feel like, you know, because 95 South starts it off with the crunk sound. It's got the Cameron interluding. It's got little John, the finishing. So that's, that's, I feel like it's just the way it bumps off. But Amari is when it like really fucking hits in my opinion. Yeah, and do you see the music video? They just yeah, man, he's just he's just having fun with it. Just having fun, good old. Just time. talking to a fucking camel. Yeah. What up? What's the problem? A camel? <laughs> yeah, wasn't it a camel? From memory, I think it was a camel. When? What? In the video, he's just talking. There's like a, he's a camel statue, and he's just fucking rapping to it, <laughs> talking to it. But the the climb back, yeah, I, that like that's an example of I think. Oh. 
bro. such a strong like story he's telling mm -hmm. and he's pulling you into his life and how like the the, the trials and tribulations and uh, go ahead oh it was my most played track of 2020 straight up 2020 what, what year are you in it's 2021 brother how's the you just said 2020 yeah man the, the climb back was released 2020 along with another track was it yeah man i'm tripping yeah man and that's and i and even hearing on this album i still think it's the best track like as soon as those those snare that, that no no the, those trap hi-hats slowly come in along with the the sample high-pitched oh then it like slows down like it's just Three everything so about that track is just like, i can imagine cole being in the studio alone just getting there and hearing it be like fuck man i'm in the fucking zone right now like that that whole track just oh that's why i like also from back to front compared to front to back because i feel like starting with hunger and hillside into close into climb back is just such a strong style you said you like the first half more i think i like the second half more than the first half i think that it perfectly represents like how we gravitate towards music yeah man like i'm at a place and i've been at a place where like production energy uh, hits me first from like a like it just i can feel it and mm. then i get to the lyrics and the storytelling and, and the soul i feel like you hit the soul of the music first like the crux like the deep roots first and i'm a bit more superficial that's a that's actually a good question i feel like asking when you when you first listen to an album because obviously when you you know you play it again and again your first few listen listens what do you focus on the most i i try not to have a focus i think naturally unless i know they're particularly lyrical like a cole or a kendrick i may try and listen and hear everything together but i'm gravitated and i tr i usually hear first the sound how it feels to me mm. not you? same here first listen it's not about think about anything it's just letting it hit you and whatever you focus on whatever whatever you feel that's what it is and the second listen i feel is normally the same but it just amplifies things that you might have missed and then from it from then on it's just like then i'll focus on lyricism yeah then i'll focus on production highlights and things I might have missed and things I could pick up and then like it just continues but yeah the overall feel of it is exactly the first thing I focus on I think or it also depends on the on is. how you're listening to the music like you are a very present listener like you don't have mm. a lot of distractions when you listen to music you're walking I don't know like you could you can say the things you're doing I like listening to music when I drive or when I like uh, exercise and lift weights like it's distracting in some ways I'm not going to catch everything but I think that's an important thing. Like when we used to do the reactions, we would be super focused on on just listening. Mm. There's something valuable to that. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, my internet just spiked, but I okay. got that. Right. <laughs> anyway, there's yeah, some there's something incredibly, incredibly valuable to that. Yeah. Anyway, let's get back to the album. You had a, you had a couple more little dot points you wanted to touch on. I mean, not on like an album level, but I just want to talk about the. He's always had a basketball theme because when he was younger, yeah, he didn't want to be a rapper. He wanted to be a basketballer, and he had to give up on those dreams to focus on rapping. And I think a lot of the reason that he struggled to push himself to rap harder and put in that hard work was because he still had those dreams of being a basketballer, and he didn't want to let them go. He never really did, as you can, because he's playing. Well, he, I think he's left now to go back to his family, but he played like five games with the Rwandan Patriots, I believe. Rwandan Patriots. Did you know that? I didn't know it was in Rwanda. Yeah, man, he's in, he's been he's been yeah he's been in the Africa League, like the actual top tier Africa League, man. Some people are angry because you know he's taken five games positions for people that have worked hard to get to there, but you know he scored five points. I think he had like. Five rebounds, three assists in the five games he had. Because he was only on for like 10 minutes each game. But I know, but yeah, dude, but that's another thing. It's just like, you know, he's always had these dreams of being a professional basketballer. And, you know, it's kind of gimmicky as it is. You know, he still did it. He's been in Africa playing for a professional league and being put on. And, you know, and he says every morning he wakes up with this album. He he plays ball. He makes music. Oh, he has... Does his thing. And family. That That's it. That's what it is. 
And I also would like to touch on about the conversation he had with Pharrell. Can we, can we back, before we get to Pharrell, Pharrell said like he always, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. before we get to Pharrell, I think you made a good point about basketball because he mentioned in the documentary mm -hmm. that he gave up. He didn't make it. He didn't work hard at basketball, right? He was he was kind of talented at it, yeah. but he didn't work at it. And he was talking about like if if he applied that same like lazy, complacent mindset to music, oh my god, he might not have made it. But he had to flip his mindset and commit and dedicate himself to the grind of daily work and just push it as far and hard as possible. And I think it's a difference between these two loves, basketball and music. He was able to make it in one and not make it in the other. It seems like due to this drive and work ethic and consistency, which he had only for music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, it's that's why I think it's beautiful to see him achieving these other goals with basketball. It's uh, yeah, it, it's fun. With childhood dream. Yeah, but I, yeah, Pharrell. He's, he's, oh yeah, Pharrell. Yeah, yeah. He um. When he was a lot younger, during like Jake Jake Cole the sideline stories, this is like 2011, I think. Like he uh, maybe even before that, but he said he had a chat and was just like, Pharrell was like, oh yeah, I've got to separate the studio time and my family time. Like I make sure at these times I'm in the studio and these times. I'm and then Jake Cole at that stage was like, what are you talking about? Like you should always, you should, when you got to make music, you make music. Like you just you should always be in the studio. And then he it said it took him like he just threw that off. But he said it took him to finally have a family to understand like, oh shit. I need a fucking schedule for this shit. So uh, it clicked with him, and I think he's realizing, you know, now how it how it works, and how he's he's got to a stage where it's working for him, as you can clearly see from yeah. what he's been releasing. Because like when you're young, you just have like this hustle and grind, like we did when mm -hmm. we we started Jungle Beats. Man, we would just be we built our own studio. We're crazy. Okay. We're nuts. What are we doing? Thousands Pumping of dollars. Yeah, yeah. Hundreds of hours. Thousands of hours. But then it's like you get to a point where you can do stuff more professionally where you can create boundaries in your life where this is for that this time is for that and it seems like cole is at a place where he is at a very professional refined more polished artist and creative yeah i think so and i think you can definitely hear that on like albums like for your eyes only where you know he's probably hasn't had a schedule he's putting probably putting most of his time with his family and when he's in the studio it's probably not fully dedicated because he's still thinking about other shit whereas now that like he's like you know, when I'm in the studio, I'm fucking in there. I'm pushing myself. I'm doing it. But as soon as that time's up, it's family, yeah? Mm -hmm. Which is part of the reason I never want a family. <laughs> what, what, what What? about it? Because you'll have to create boundaries? Yeah, man, because i got to put time into that. I'm, I'm a selfish person by nature. It's, it's something I know, and, I, and I'm okay with that. I would love to live the rest of my life not being, you know, obviously – 100% selfish, but I, I want to put more time into myself because I feel like the more time I have for myself, the more I can, you know, push myself. And do the things you want to do. Yeah, man, because I've got fuck tons of goals. And if I have a family, I'm going to have to give up some of those. Right. You, you have to adjust. You have to adapt. Yeah, and so, Because it doesn't sound like having a family like Cole was a, is a goal of yours right now. Nah, man. <laughs> right? So, fair enough. Can we talk about Puff? Oh, yes. Right. In so this, this on the track. Uh, Let go of my hand. Correct. Right. I didn't realize I'm a read. Actually, do you remember what happened in 2013 uh, with Cold and Puff? Um, not off the top. I'm pretty sure Puff said that he should be mentioned among the greats. And then J. Cole was there. And he's just like, mm, I don't think so, man. Oh, which really? is which is correct, but he shouldn't have said it. Okay, so 2013 rumors surfaced that Cole and Puff fought at an MTV Awards after party. Puff had argued with Kendrick over his King of New York claim on yeah, 2013's yeah, yeah. Control mm -hmm. and attempted to pour a drink on him. J. Cole, a friend, intervened, which led to a scuffle. I, yeah. But then apparently, you know... They call some, now. Some people claim that wasn't true and they were just rumors. But... It seems like some type of disagreement was had. Yeah. I mean, if he's rapping about it, it's probably true. Yeah, something happened. And now he's got Puff at the end of his song doing his outro. Yeah, exactly. It just goes to show that, like, you know, they can... They're made up. Which I think... But also the fact that Puff tried to argue that Kendrick wasn't King of New York. Get the fuck out of here. 
I mean, <laughs> Come on, man. Get even, the fuck out of here. Even it, but in 2013, like, Kendrick wasn't as, as solidified as he is now. There was still some, like, you know, old heads who were still defending that position. I mean, he had Section 80, uh, OD, and a uh, good kid, Mad City, out like, that's, that's enough. No it's one a- was doing that shit. That's enough, man. That's strong. But once he got to Pimp... Pimp's still his best album. It's I don't think rap. he's ever going to top it. I honestly don't think he will. Do you think this is one of Cole's best albums? Or is it too early to say? Uh, I think i got to give him more time to breathe. But I think... Yeah, I mean, like, if I... Do you want me to actually have a list of me ranking his albums? You want to do that? Yeah, we could do that now. Let's hit it. Oh, let me... Because, let me, let me, let me, let me okay, while you pull that up, for me... Yeah. This has potential to be one of Cole's best albums. And to me, this is one of Cole's, one of my favorite albums from him. But I mm. absolutely love Born Sinner so much. Yeah, man. Like, people, they're not, the argument's normally the best album for Cole between probably Born Sinner, uh, For Your Eyes Only. Oh, not For Your Fucking, not that album. 2014 Forest Hill Drive and fucking uh, Friday Night Cold World. Nah, Friday Night Lights, man. That album okay. is... And that's his mixtape. Okay, got it. I think my favorite Cole albums would probably be... First would be 2014 Forest Hills Drive. I'm sorry, that's got the lyricism and the hits and the product. Now, that, that's just a damn good fucking album. G-O-M-D, uh, Fire Squad, it's a strong album. Yeah, man. Second would probably be Friday Night Lights, along with probably the warm-up. I feel like... Because when I first got introduced, introduced to Cole, it, when I was fucking like, what, 17, 16... They, they were the albums, the mixtapes I was smashing over and over and over again. That shit was just on repeat. Uh, after that would be definitely probably Born Sinner. And then, then honestly, yeah, probably KOD along with this album would be the next. I think that this out. Al- so they're, then they're similar for you right now. Yeah, I actually really fucked with KOD. I can understand why people didn't like it. I, I get it, but well, I we, think it was a, We reviewed it, it. You guys can watch that if you want to see our review on it. Yeah, I still, I still fuck with that album heavy. All right, so right now this is in like fourth fourth spot, which isn't that high. Oh, because my, the way I look at things is I, I give albums time to breathe. Sure. I feel like if you place something at the top straight away, you know, everything everything's gets better or worse with time. I like giving things room to breathe. And also sometimes you listen to an album, be really into it, and then all of a sudden you stop listening to it and you won't get back to it. Does that mm. ever happen to you? What's the last album that happened to you with? That, that definitely happens. The last one? Yeah, or just the one that you remember. I just think because it's an interesting... Uh, it says something about the music. If you just order, just automatically stop. Maybe maybe you over-listen to it, which can happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I haven't listened to the off-season as much because uh, because I don't want that to happen. <laughs> I'm looking at my previously listened. Oh, honestly, Brockhampton's Roadrunner. Man, that wasn't... I didn't, I didn't like that. It's actually... I, I actually really liked it. But, uh... But yeah, I just haven't gone back to it. Mm. Yeah, I haven't gone back to it at all. There's something about replayability of music, and this album has high replayability. Mm. Mm. He said, mm. Mm-mm. It does. It has massive replayability. Yeah. I think that says something about the album's quality. Yeah, you know, I think... Uh, are you just riding a wave? Or are you, are you producing something that has people coming back, like layers? And uh, I think a big part of what's going to be getting people to come back is is willing to open up to a lot of new artists now. The little baby feature on Pride is the Devil, I didn't expect that. And honestly, the first time I listened to it, I didn't really enjoy it because I've just never been a fan of little baby's voice. Mm, but after I've listened to that track a lot, it's really fucking good, man. It's a good feature. He He's, you know, speaking about some shit. His flow really complements J. Cole's and it fits the beat well. And I know a lot of people were hating on Amine having the same beat and T minus using the same beat. But at the end of the day, it's a dope song. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> we sample all the time. We sample exactly. I don't understand that. Like Can't Decide and Pride is the Devil are both dope tracks. Why are you going to fucking trash on the producer for fucking... And why do you have to choose one song that's better? If I had to choose, I would say... Probably Pride is the Devil is better than Camp Side, but I still fucking love Camp Side. And interestingly, we you pointed out the other day how Cole ended his freestyle on YouTube. He did that freestyle with the radio show. 
Yeah. And he ended it, and I didn't realize it's. He ended it on how come a man hasn't entered his prime from a hundred mil, and he just <laughs> yeah. stopped. He and stopped. T- <laughs> it's so obvious. He's like, really, oh fuck, I'm about to fucking give away fucking lines from the album about to release. That's why he stops. It sucks because he was going in. That freestyle was fucking hard. That's right. Damn. I, you know what? You also, we also mentioned JID. I would have loved to see JID on something oh, like Applying Pressure. Bro. Mm, come on, son. That's a missed I mean, opportunity. I get like the second half of Applying Pressure is him just having fun with it. Like he does like with Kendrick on Forbidden Fruit. Like that's just J. Cole. Like I'm not mad at it, but come on. That is asking for JID to just fucking swivel his way in with this little, 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 little. you know, just, oh, if he just came in on that shit and went in. Or trading bar for bar with J. Cole when like with Cole with what was that track that Cole was on that he like went back and forth with? I can't remember. It was fucking hard. I think every I I like every feature. I think every feature fits well, which is quite hard to do, right? And there's only like six or seven features on here, I believe. But still that's you know, it's only what a 10, 11 track album. Mm. You know Bass had like backing vocals on like four of these tracks as well? Did he? Yeah, man. Bass can sing. Bass had backing vocals, I believe, on 100 mil, Let Go of My Hand, uh, Hunger on Hillside, and I think the other one might have been My Life with Murray. I'm pretty sure that's it. There you go. Man, he's, he, it's, it's a pre, I, I'm sure he appreciates that Cole is highlighting his talents and skill because Bass isn't a very known artist. But, yeah, it's it's kind of odd because his past few albums have received a lot of build up, you know, the the album art to the singles to the features. Like they've always been strong, but I've just never liked this project's front to back because they've always felt a little, I don't know. There's just something missing with all of them. Well, there's no denying it's dope. No, and uh, I want to point out. Do you know why he titled it? I mean, now we're a week later. I asked you this last time. Why he titled the tracks like they're impossible to search? Oh yeah, why? Well, I don't know the reason for that. It, it, marketing wise, is it doesn't help. It's, it does. No, it doesn't make sense. It, I don't. I don't know. People want to be different. I'm sure Cole has a reason, or maybe he's like, I don't know. Whatever, I'll do what I want. I reckon there is a reason for it. Maybe he's just trying to prove that he's so dope that. He can just do that shit and it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. He can still chart. He can still... Yeah. I, don't, I don't want your search engine optimization help. Whereas Childish Gambino didn't really work as well with his past album. You know, the fucking white cover and some of the tracks didn't really have names and the way he released it. Yeah, there were like, dates. That was a fucking mess. But does he really care? I don't no, know if he cares. he doesn't give a fuck. Donald Glover does whatever the fuck Donald Glover wants to do. <laughs> and Atlanta's... I still haven't watched the rest of season two Atlanta. I gotta catch up. Me though. Damn. And it's and the, also the two actors that are prominent with him on that show as well have done real fucking good things now thanks to that. So well, it's a it's, not, it's a great not. show. Uh, yeah. So what's next for J Cole is what's the next album supposed to be called? The Come Up. Oh no, not the Come Up. Fuck, I'm I'm fucking off it. Uh, the Fall Off. The Fall Off. Because I know he he mentioned he saved some tracks and he was trying to battle with himself to be like I have to let go of some tracks and not hold everything so close to me because otherwise mm. I won't release shit. What was the one of them he did that with? It was a single he did last year. Uh, that was, um, fuck, that was a good one. They're yelling at our screen right now, man. Middle child. Middle child. That's Middle child. Hard as fuck. I love what he said about it. He's like, as soon as I record this track, I want to save it. But that's not me no more. I had to fucking release it. I right. had to let people hear this shit. And thank you, Cole, because that shit bangs. And I needed that shit during coronavirus. So thank you. <laughs> oh, well, we gotta be careful about saying that word. I'm telling you, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram are nuts about detecting algorithms. Whether you write it, they they be they be they be not showing videos and posts if you mention some things. For real? For a hundred percent real. What should we call it then? Let's call it the fucking plague. <laughs> <laughs> I, the thing. You know what we're talking about. You know the thing yeah, that happened yeah, we know, we last know the year thing. and now yeah. the thing. Yeah, you. Oh got yeah. It. Anyway, we ain't here to talk about the thing. We're here to talk about Cole, J Cole. Always Cole, J Cole. So, <laughs> look, 
I love this album. I think it's one of Cole's most professional, sophisticated, well-written, really strong storytelling with, with again, complementing strong production, great features. It takes a lot of boxes. I don't, there's not a single track that I would get rid of. I really like it. I think he did a great job, and I'm looking forward to what's coming next. But I'm appreciative of what is here now. Straight up, man. I agree with everything you said. Start to finish, it does a mistake. And even just like tracks like Punch in the Clock, it's like something Cole's never really done before. Like it's such a it's such a, an odd beat for him to go on, but it works. It's only a minute and 50 seconds as well. Like, man, there's just so much variety on this album and so much he's talking about about his life that you can relate to. It's just a beast. I'm glad I've given it some time off as well. Yeah, we, we really sat on it. We listened to it multiple, multiple times. And yeah, Punch in the Clock does have that... Dun, 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 dun. Bro, it's just the fucking... Dancing. The percussion on that track is fucking nuts. He's just... And he didn't produce that one? No, that's Tay Beast and uh, Mario Luciano. Tay Beast is a beast. I appreciate how you remember them, you know, especially now that you're doing... Well, I've got a list next to me, bro, I'll be honest. But uh, I, I could remember a few of them. I, it's because producing is like my, my, my shit. Like, do you remember your first listen to this album? Tell me, what's yours? I can't, I gotta think. I'd worked like fucking 10, 12 hours. I was fucking wrecked. I got home, I rolled a joint, oh, yeah. I smoked it. I was on my balcony staring out to the fucking nothing and I hit play. And from, I used to legitimately for 40 minutes was on my balcony just zoning the fuck out and just fucking nodding and just listening. And when it was over, I did it again. <laughs> I just had to listen to it again straight away. Cause I was just like, and I think there were two tracks that I had to fucking play again. Amari, I had to fucking listen to it again before I could go into my life and fucking let go of my hand. I had to fucking play again. That was the two uh, tracks Amari that is going. one of the, the hardest. I love Amari. Oof. It is. It just when that beat drop. It's hard. And, it's and, so hard. And, but on the other side, you have Let Go of My Hand, which is this kind of beautiful, soft mm. storytelling. Like you got black, you got bass. It's beautiful, man. It's like Let Go of My Hand is beautiful. And even My Life. My Life is such a good fucking track. Like the, tra it, the tracks that I don't put in my favorites, you know, they're still fucking dope tracks. Like it's just, it's just, it's just a fucking good album. Murray did such a nice job on that beautiful hook mm. and i know i don't touch too much on lyricism because i'm mainly into production but i like how cole ended the album with a uh, lyrics on hunger and hillside saying the money might fade but respect don't still gonna be me when success gone i think that's a real dope way to end the album man that's a real i'm really glad you pointed out pointed mm. that out can you read that out one more time the money might fade but respect don't Still gonna be me when success gone. I think that's a great place to close this. Mm. Oh yeah, we we, we jungle beats. We 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 chill. We just talk about music. We're talking about shit we like. I like this, man. I like this. We could just have a casual, calm conversation. Or calm, because we flip out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, nah, man. I'm a lot. I'm a lot more mellow these days. <laughs> you think so? What do you mean? I don't know. I'm in a better place. I'm yeah. just, I know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a different city. I'm doing what I'm pushing myself to do what I want to do. It's just, it just feels better. That's beautiful. Well, yeah. look, I think this is the beginning of a bit of a resurgence of us reviewing music that we really want to review. Yeah. We can't tell you what albums we might do next. You just gotta stay tuned and, and and make sure you uh you follow us to see what's going on. Yeah, because we just love doing this shit. We love music. Yeah, we love each other. Of no course. Homo. No, 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 no. So you got a little bit, of, a little bit of homo. It's okay, a little bit of homo. A little bit of homo. A little bit of homo. No homo. Whatever. No, no. Man, that they'll oh, yeah. they'll X-rate our video. They'll block it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, uh, that's J Cole. The off season. Oof. R you ain't listened to it yet. What the fuck you doing? What are you, doing? To that bitch. What are you doing? We're going to, for the people who made it this far, because we know a lot of you don't. You want to tell them what we're thinking about doing <laughs> next? Um, the new Rick and Morty's 
dropping soon. So we're thinking of reviewing the episodes because we love that show. So we yes. don't want to just be reviewing music. We just want to be reviewing shit we love. Like, shit we love. Should we connect with? Well, that's why we're Jungle Beats Media, not Jungle Beats huh. Music or Radio. Because we're a diverse group of uh, crazy motherfuckers. And so we want to bring, and I will say this when we do it, Reddit discussions, but in a video format. So we're thinking about doing that in, in, in some future videos, going back and forth, just because there, are, there is interesting, thought-provoking, psychological uh, lessons about life and, and things to reflect mm -hmm. on and just nonsense and silliness that we love about... Uh, uh, what is it? What, what, Dan, what's his name? Who produced it? Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon, like, and the, the other producers and writers, like, that. I think there's something there to be talked about. So, when's that going to release? When are we looking for that? I think that's like this month at some point. Well, we're in June now, right? That's are we in June. That's not a date, motherfucker. No, we're in May. It's the last day of May. Okay. What is that? Season that's, five? That's not a date. I mean, it's it's an estimation. I don't know, date. June twenty. So you can look out for that at the end of June. And, uh, but for now, we're just going to keep hitting you with whatever albums we want. If, if Kanye yeah. drops, and bro, I cannot wait to see what comes next from Mr. West. Because oh, Jesus King was hot garbage. <laughs> you thought if it was... anyone disagrees with me, <laughs> come on, son. You thought it was hot garbage? It was hot garbage. Wow, we man. never reviewed it. That's right, I was in Singapore. It wasn't wasn't worth reviewing. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Look, we got let's get up out of here. Jungle Beats. Here. I'm Alexander Jungle Emmanuel Sandals. You can catch me on the internet. I'm Thade Gray. Represent. You Which name you what was this? We we chill. See ya. Peace. Is it? Yeah, is it? Should we just leave or? <laughs>